This video tries to explain how bonds are formed and why certain atoms can form one bond or two bonds or no bonds. We'll start by looking at something very simple like H2. If you look at its electron configuration, it's 1s1. And if you remember drawing an orbital diagram, maybe you remember we put it in the s orbital. This is an unpaired electron. When an atom has an unpaired electron, that electron can be used for bonding. If you remember, an s orbital is just a sphere. So the molecule of H2 is two spheres overlapping in space, and this overlap right here, that is the bond. That's the bond that forms H, H. So that overlap are these two electrons. They're overlapping in space and they're forming a bond. Similarly, if you look at HF, we've already looked at the electron configuration of H, but now let's look at it for F. When I write electron configurations in this video, I'm going to write the abbreviated electron configurations. So just the outermost energy level. So fluorine is 2s2, 2p5. You remember when you draw your orbital diagrams, so there's 2s2, we draw an arrow up and down, and then the p sublevel has three orbitals. Uh, you're going to have 2 and 2 and 1. So if you see, fluorine has one unpaired electron. It's going to be used for bonding. And it's in a p orbital. If you remember, p orbitals are this funny sort of figure eight shape. So if we were to look at the molecule HF, it would be H, which has an unpaired electron in an s orbital, and a p, which has an unbonded electron in a p orbital, that's F. And this overlap right here is this bond. When we draw H, F, this bond right here is that overlap. And interestingly enough, you might notice there's a lone pair, there's a lone pair, and there's a lone pair. So not only can you explain the bonds that it forms, you can explain where the lone pairs are coming from. So we're going to work our way across the first or the second period of the periodic table and look at the elements. If we look at beryllium, it's 2s2. Well, it has no unpaired electrons, so how can it form a bond? Well, it takes one of those electrons and it promotes it up to the empty 2p sublevel. It promotes an electron to a higher sublevel. So now we have one electron in the 2s and we have one electron in the 2p. So now it has two unpaired electrons and can form two bonds. But more than that, it's unfortunately not quite that simple, it actually forms two new hybrid orbitals. Remember, an orbital is just a shape, so we're saying it's forming two new shapes. These shapes look like this. They have a big sort of lobe and a little lobe. The large lobe is called the bonding side, and the little lobe is called the anti-bonding side. You do not need to know anything about that. Okay? Just if you see a beryllium, here's one of its big lobes, the bonding lobe and the bonding lobe. Maybe it overlaps with the s orbital from hydrogen, and we get this overlap in space, and what we've just formed is this molecule. Be H2. These new hybrid orbitals, since there's an electron in an S and one in the P, is called SP hybridization. If we look at boron, its electron configuration is 2s2, 2p1. We draw the orbital diagram, and since it only has one unpaired electron, it looks like it can only form one bond, but instead it promotes an electron. So now it actually has three unpaired electrons. So it's going to form three bonds. It's going to form three new sp2, get one in the s, two in the p's, sp2, hybrid orbitals. And that takes the shape over here in this molecule. And these overlaps in space here are the bonds between boron and hydrogen.
So that's why boron forms three bonds. If we go to carbon, it looks like it can only form two bonds. But again, it's going to go ahead and promote an electron. So now it's got four unpaired electrons. You might be catching the pattern here. One's in the S, three are in the P. So it makes four new sp3 hybrid orbitals. And that is why carbon forms four bonds. I'm going to stop drawing those shapes because they all look exactly the same. Now we're going to get a little more interesting. Nitrogen, S 2s2, 2p3, has three unpaired electrons, so it forms a compound like NH3, and you can see that this lone pair is right there, and it forms one, two, three bonds, because it has one, two, three unpaired electrons. It would like to promote this electron to a higher energy level, but there's no such thing as a 2D, so there's no place for it to put it. So it cannot promote any electrons, and that's it. It forms three bonds, no hybridization, no promoting, no nothing. But let's look at phosphorus, which is in the same group as nitrogen. Instead of 2s2, 2p3, it's 3s2, 3p3. So, just like nitrogen, it can form three bonds, and then it has the lone pair. But it can promote an electron to this empty 3d sublevel. So it takes this electron, there's only one here now, and it puts the other one up here. So now you have five electrons that are unpaired, and these are called s, p, 3d, hybrid orbitals. And that's why phosphorus can form five bonds, for instance, in this PCL5 molecule. So back when we drew this Lewis structure, I told you why phosphorus would be able to, I would tell you why phosphorus could do this. This is why phosphorus can form five bonds. Any atom that's in the third period or higher can do this sort of promoting and form expanded octets. Any atom in the second period cannot because there's no 2D sublevel to promote electrons into. Going across here to oxygen, 2s2, 2p4, two unpaired electrons, two bonds, here's a lone pair, there's a lone pair. So it forms things like water, it cannot promote electron because there's no such thing as a 2D. It simply doesn't exist. But let's look at sulfur, which instead of 2s2, 2p4, is 3s2, 3p4. So, same as oxygen, it's got two unpaired electrons, two bonds, two lone pairs. But, it can take this electron and promote it up to the... Sorry, I didn't mean to do that. So, it takes this electron here first, and it promotes it up to the 3D. So now you have one, two, three, four electrons that are unpaired, so it forms four bonds, and then this lone pair is that lone pair. But this electron can now get promoted up here, so now you have one here, and these are all unpaired, and now you have a total of six, and this is S P3, D2 hybridization. And this is how you form compounds like SF6. So sulfur can ex form this expanded octet because it ha can promote electrons into the third energy level. Similarly, if we look at fluorine, 2S2, 2P5, one unpaired electron, one bond, three lone pairs, three lone pairs. Cannot promote electrons, so that's all that fluorine can do. Chlorine, 3s2, 3p5. Again, it's got one unpaired electron, can form one bond, but it can promote this electron up. So now we've got those still there, this here. Now you can see that we've got three unpaired electrons, and that can form things like Cl, F3, and you'll notice that there's two lone pairs, 
and those are the two lone pairs right there. Okay, so that's where you get your T-shaped. But we can promote another electron. So we've got those two still there. Now we've got these like that. Now we've got five. And this is where you can make compounds like, it's going to be a little hard to draw in here. I didn't leave myself enough room. But ICL5 with a lone pair right there. That this lone pair right here. Now it looks like we could promote another one and then we'd have seven. But seven is actually just too many to try to crowd around an atom. You'll never get more than six bonds. So even though it looks like it could form seven, it cannot. But not least, let's look at your no low noble gases. Well, they're so stable, how can they possibly form bonds? Well, helium? Can't. Neon? Can't. But once you get to argon and higher, you've got the ability to promote an electron. So you can have things that form two bonds, and that would be something like Kr uh, F2, and then it would have one, two, three lone pairs around the middle. That gives you that funny linear one with the three lone pairs, and we can keep promoting. We can promote it one more time. So I've still got two here. I've got two here, but I've got one, two, three, four. Um, so I wrote, but I wrote argon here. I mean, krypton, argon works the same. So I can form things with argon with four bonds. Okay, so we can do this. We'll do some fluorines. And then two lone pairs. So around the middle. And this is where you get your square planar geometry. So this is my attempt to explain why certain things form the number of bonds that they do. In the next video, I'll show you a shortcut where you can just look at a structure and figure out the hybridization very, very quickly. See you there.